When it was announced in February that Abdelaziz Bouteflika would stand for a fifth term as president of Algeria, protests began on social media and on the streets. The 82-year-old had rarely been seen in public since suffering a stroke in 2013, and many were sick of what they saw as a corrupt cabal that had formed around the leader during his 20-year rule. Despite his resignation, the protests continue with calls for sweeping political reform, as Neil Kisseli has seen. As day broke over Algiers and the first rays of sunlight cast their shadows between the faded colonial-era buildings, I watched two boys hurriedly make their way down a side street towards the main avenue. It was Friday, protest day across Algeria. Both were wearing flags knotted around their necks and draped down their backs. One had the Algerian national flag, while his friend wore an Amazir flag of the country's Berber population. Arriving at Place Audin, they stopped at a makeshift stall where they bartered for a few moments, before picking up a hat with the national colours on it and disappearing into the growing crowd. Before the day's end, An estimated one million people would fill the streets of the city in protest at what they saw as a corrupt political system. Nationwide protests have been growing since February. Faced with this unprecedented scale of dissent, and as the army swung its support behind the protesters, President Bouteflika stepped down. But this didn't stop the weekly demonstrations. Huge crowds were again out on the streets the following Friday, calling for a wholesale clear-out of the leadership that, as they see it, had pillaged the country's wealth for 20 years. They must all clear out, has become the slogan of the protests. One of the hallmarks has been their peaceful, often joyful nature. One Friday, I watched a group of young marchers in Algiers pause below the balcony of a faded white apartment building. Above, leaning against the iron railings, a woman in her 80s, shawl pulled tightly around her, beamed down at them as they serenaded her with an old song from the War of Independence against the French a previous era of protest that she had obviously lived through. The other hallmark has been the use of humour. Placards poke fun at the country's politicians, and when police began using water cannon on the crowds, protesters turned up in their bathrobes brandishing shampoo, ready for a free shower. Others brought their pot plants to be watered. Algerians have a good eye for the absurd. Amid the humour, though, they're protesting a difficult reality. Two-thirds of the country's population is under the age of 30, and a quarter of these are unemployed. The cost of living is a challenge for many. Yet Algeria, one of Europe's main gas suppliers, should be a wealthy place. Where has all the money gone? Hakim asked, as we sat on the pavement in his neighbourhood. He told me he turned 40 this year. He was 20 when Budflika came to power. I'm unemployed. The most valuable years of my life have been wasted. What good has this gas money done for me? We need change. As well as those struggling at the bottom, Algeria's middle classes have their own complaints. In a tea house on the waterfront of a provincial town, a group of men in their thirties take turns recounting their daily grind. We joke about how repetitive it all sounds. Ahmed tells me, the problem isn't just poverty. All of us here have money to buy food. It's that there isn't anything to do. Most cities have no cinemas, no concert venues. It's almost impossible to get visas to travel. You could die of boredom in this country. It's this generation and those younger who are pushing hardest for change. But not everyone is so confident it will come. Some older people I spoke to voiced caution. They'd lived through Algeria's Anne Noir or Black Years in the 1990s, when terrorism took such a violent toll. That period followed a crackdown against similar protests. One genial bank manager I chatted to was happy to discuss politics, but when I asked him if he supported the current protests, his mood darkened. We're playing with fire here. The ruling class will not give up without a fight. And I, for one, don't want to see my grandchildren live through the same horrors my children did. He then recalled standing outside his office one morning in the 90s as a group of armed fighters drove down the main street of his town, holding the severed heads of people they'd killed overnight. It wasn't the first such story I'd heard. But it's Hakim and Ahmed's generation which makes up the majority of Algeria's population. And it's they who are out on the streets calling for change. As night fell across Algiers that Friday, and the dark blue sweep of the bay turned inky black, I watched groups of young activists, again draped in the Algerian flag, collecting litter left behind by the day's demonstrations. They do this after every protest. It's as much a symbolic gesture as an act of civic duty, a message to those in power. Algerians are cleaning up their country. Neil Kisseli.